So this is the, uh, I suppose, the front of the unit. This little white lever here, you can just see there's a pedal. That is the head lock mechanism. This is the drive head. I actually have another head mechanism here. This came from a hard drive uh, that was similar to these from my IBM Series 1. Uh, before I got the Series 1, somebody had taken the drive apart already, so before anybody gets upset, I did not destroy a drive. The uh, unit here, you can see it only has head read mechanisms for three platters. So this was apparently a small drive. We've got these uh, lovely micro ribbon cables here. Huge big voice coil on a permanent magnet. Now I've stripped the back of this drive down a bit and I'm gonna ow, fiddle about drop that bloody head drive so we have what's called the logic gate the card cage uh, and before I said that there were some card spare that I didn't recognize I haven't actually looked inside one of these in a while and uh, these look awfully familiar so I suspect that I have some spare parts for the controller on the drive uh, two of these boards are for the logic, and um, two of them are for the servo, and I've missed what the other one is for. So that's what makes this up. We have a fan. The top fan and the spindle motor itself both run at 110 volt. The rest of the logic section runs at plus 24 volts, plus 12 volts, plus 5, minus 4, minus 12. Uh, and then I think there's like an 8.5 and, and a 6 in there somewhere as well, so... God only knows. This is where the uh, 110 volts comes in for the motor. So this is the spindle off the motor, the belt, and then this is the um, spindle that the platter assembly hooks to. This here is a brake, an electromagnetic brake. You can see the coil back there. So when the power is cut, the uh, brake springs open, grabs the spindle here and slows it down. These are anti-static brushes from the uh, flat belt. We have, come around here and see it's uh, slightly uh, ratcheted edged. This is for the belt tensioner. Uh, you use this ratchet to sort of lock it in place. Um, it actually, this whole hard, or the whole um, motor unit pivots on this axis here. So it rocks in and out to tension the drive belt. So use that to lock it out and then for fine tuning there's this rather curious looking barrel assembly here with a spring that pushes against it uh, for just sort of an extra. I guess you use this to lock it close and then that uh, to do the last little bits. So this is the hard drive unit. Uh, usually there's a cover here by the way. I popped it off for you. Here are the jukebox drives, or rather the um, jukeboxes for the drive. Uh, this is AA14 Volume 2, whatever the hell AA14 is. So if we look at the unit here, you can see the individual floppies. And uh, the way it works is when it's inserted into the drive, the drive levers this down, which then allows the cover to ratchet off. Like so. And then the individual 8 inch floppies slide in here. So, hard drives, floppy disks. So I told you that there are two more disks, I still haven't installed them yet. The usual system only comes with two internal drives, in fact the base system only comes with one. This here is actually an expansion and so it has a longer frame in here and then two extra drives. So this is um, an added option, I guess you could say. Down here we have the additional power supply and filter for the two extra drives. And then this here, which I found down here, is a um, terminator. As far as I can tell, these are obviously resistor packs. So, uh, presumably it plugs into the back of the end of the chain, uh, which should be, th no, this one, this is ED. Um, but I haven't taken the controller cage apart on this yet to find it. 
which brings us to this. Now, IBM, as I complained last time, likes to invent their own terminology, uh, which drives me nuts. Um, I mean, okay, obviously they lead the industry in a lot of ways, and some of the terms that they came up with, you know, are the first term to describe a concept or something like that, so they're allowed to use their own. But a lot of the time, it's not, and they just made up their own shit for it, which really, yeah, like I said, drives me nuts. So this is the A gate. You can have a B gate and a D gate. This is the D gate here. The B gate goes on the other side, but it's not on the system. That would contain um, a internal modem. Uh, usually, most of this logic area is empty. This is usually empty. These are usually empty. If you have a... And there are several modems that this come with, or the MICR, which is a magnetic character reader. That would go in here. At the moment, this has got nothing, so the blower fan uh, just cycles there through empty slots. The uh, A1, which is this top module here, contains the processor and the RAM. These five boards, one, two, three, four, five, six boards, is the control store. And these are the RAM boards for the control store. This is um, the I.O. processor for the system. This is the main store. This is the processor that actually handles uh, executing the applications off disk. This is the RAM for the main store. The base system came with 48K. A well stack system came with 128K. This is 256K, which is why it needs the extra supply. So this is completely stacked out, which is really exciting. Down here we have, um, this is the workstation boards, the controller boards. These here are called top connectors, and as the name suggests, it just simply connects multiple boards together. This is the disk controller for the internal hard disk. These boards I do not know about. Um, they are not described in the manual, and I can't work out what goes to this location. However, I know the system used to have external modems, so uh, rather than internal modems, which it could have. So I think that these are um, serial I.O. boards. And then they go to the bus and tag interface on the far side. So, if the system was up and running, you can use the CE panel to boot the main store, boot the control store. Now why you would do that I'm not sure, but you can do it from here. Um, and again, step through instruction, things like that. Obviously, I've got a lot of work to do. Um, I'd like to pull all of these out and clean them, get some of the gunk off. This residue here is, of course, the foam on the covers. This stuff that is totally ubiquitous and has all uh, corroded and died, um, you know, 20, 30 years down the line. This was made in 1978, by the way. So uh, it's older than I am, in fact. Uh, not by much, but is. Um, the system obviously needs first a cleaning. Logic boards I'd like to clean, get some electrical cleaner, clear the back plane, things like that. Uh, double check the wiring on the back of the back plane. We slide the logic gate out. How cool is that? Make sure all the pins are nice and straight, things like that. There's nothing funny going on. We need to clear out this. And this is the remnants of these damn mice. Um, as best as possible. And I'm afraid to t come in here with a vacuum cleaner and just suck it out in case something useful comes through. But I'm not sure what else I'm going to do because there's just so much detritus that um, I don't know how to do it any other way. I mean, if I sit here with a pair of tweezers, I'd be here for freaking months, and I just don't have that kind of patience, I'm afraid. The next thing is getting the power supply up. I was a bit worried that maybe, um, given how old the system is, that one or more of the caps could blow, and I would take a chunk out of Iowa the size of, uh, you know, a large nuclear facility. But apparently, the older caps, and particularly the bigger caps, are usually very, very well made. And those are not the things to worry about. It's the little caps that I should be afraid of. Uh, we will see. I would like to disconnect the um, power.
power supply from the logic gate so that when it comes up, if there's some kind of horrendous short and it over voltages and throws like 120 volts AC into the logic gates, I'm not going to smoke the entire system. Problem is, is that the control logic is required for the power supply to come up. It's soft power. So if this isn't here, the system just doesn't even come online. The power supplies don't come up. So um, I'm going to have to take my life in my hands and bring it up with the control circuitry, the logic circuitry in place. So if there's something wrong and with this power supply and it takes the logic circuitry out, <laughs> I'm, I'm boned. But with any luck, we won't have that issue. If the supplies come up, okay, then I can bring a oscilloscope into play and watch the voltages, make sure the ripple is expected, um, that it is clean, that we're obviously not sending huge amounts of voltage to the wrong place, things like that. Thankfully, with the help of the books, I know precisely what voltages go where. So um, I can strip these off and then check the terminals one by one off the ground bus and work out what's going on. Then the next trick would be to see if the disks function, the motors on these run on AC. So um, I should be able to get these spinning up without too much trouble, find out if they sound like a dryer full of Yugo parts, or if maybe we have a hope in hell of them working again. And then bring the logics back in and see if it'll come up. Even without a terminal, I can use a CE to watch at IPL. Uh, which is boot, by the way. Uh, IPL stands for Initial Program Load. And um, I should be able to tell if it's locking hard or if um, we have some kind of life. Obviously, having a terminal is going to be on the order as well. This will be more of an interesting challenge. I did, however, discover what this little tool is here. I thought this was just a rather um, ostentatious tool for opening the doors, but what it's actually for is aligning and um, setting the uh, adjustments on the drive. So if you do this, then it'll set maybe the picker, and then this one here will do the read heat uh, skew and things like that. So there's four functions that this little tool does, all of which is documented in my books, which you can't see because of all my wife's crap, but they're over there. Um, with the books, I actually have a chance at this. Without them, I'd have nothing because, you know, I could go so far, guess how it should go, but knowing how to align this device, for example, you know, where would you find that? Bit savers, which I used for the documentation on most of the other systems, doesn't have any System 34 stuff yet. Um, when I find somebody with a scanner that has an ADF that doesn't bend the paper in a 180 degree fold like mine does, I'll start scanning as much of this as possible because obviously if you have a System 34, having this information is um, required. You can't go anywhere without it. So I want to scan it in and give something back to the community. Uh, that, however, is um, not the priority this is but it hopefully will get done so there we have the system 34 it is a start with any luck and i know i've said this on the vector and the pdp and god only knows what else but with any luck i will keep you updated as i progress and i can show you how i'm going anyways promised update i told you i'd get there in the end if you have been watching thank you very much and i hope you guys have a great day take care now